Let's go ahead and talk about the macro trends. In particular, I will go ahead and talk about national income. We all know what national income is. National income can be defined as the total of goods and service produced in a country. So, jitne bhi goods and service a country mein produce ho rahe hain, let me just mark this out, that is called national income. In, in uh, other words, it's, it's a composite measure of all economic activities. So, if I go ahead and I add all the economic activities together, that is what gives me national income. Now, there are some features of the national income which we must go through. The first feature is that it's a flow concept. Flow means over a period of time. Stock means at a point of time. So when I talk about national income, it's a flow concept because it is over a given period of time against stock concepts which are at a point of time. National income usually is calculated for one year. Right? It's calculated for one year. So it's a flow concept. It is different from national wealth. See, my income is different from my wealth, right? My wealth can come from what my parents give me. My wealth can come from if there is a transfer income made to me. My wealth can come from what I acquire from my grandparents. But my income only comes from what I work, right? So because wealth and income are different, national income and national wealth are also different, right? So it is different from national wealth. Third, it's a comprehensive index of the state of economy. So national income tells us what is the state of the economy that we are, work, that we are in. It's an objective measure. Objective means it's a standardized measure. I mean, this year national income ko calculate karne ka method change. Ho the method to calculate national income remains the same from year to year. So the technique to calculate national income it remains the same from one year to another. Okay. Now let us go ahead and let us talk about uh, what was, uh, you know, the concept of national income before independence. So, but the first time that national income was introduced, it was in the period of 1867-68. It was introduced by Dada by Noroji. But when he introduced this, there were several problems with this method, right? First, it estimated, its estimate differed widely, right? Second, the estimates were not only, not also comparable. So if I, if I find the estimate for one uh, state versus the an, another, it was not even comparable, right? Third, it was a territorial coverage, a conceptual basis and method of estimation. So it basic tha. And you can think that just on the basis of, um, of, you know, just on the basis of the concepts, the national income was calculated. So very conceptual in nature. It was not reliable to study the growth of the Indian economy. So we could not go ahead and, you know, study the, the condition of the Indian economy based on the national income calculated by Dada by knowledge. Okay, beta. now what we can do is then let's go further and let's talk about the first time that a scientific estimate was used. So the first scientific estimate, it was done by Professor V.K.R.V. Rao and uh, he actually went ahead and he used the income and output method for the year 1931-32. Okay, now let us go ahead and talk about the growth rate of national uh, per capita national income from 1860 to 1950. So, beta, pre independence era, post independence era. So, in the pre independence era, these are the four ways, uh, I mean, four periods in which you can go ahead and look at the growth of national income. So, the first period is 1860 to uh, 1885. Growth rate was 1.1%. Then 1885 to 1905, minus 0 0.3. 1905 to 1925, 1 1.3. And 1925 to 1950, minus 0 0.1. So these were the growth rates that I had in the different periods. Right? Now let's talk about... So if you notice, the growth rate never even reached 2%. 
and it was in fact negative for prominent period. Of course, this was the British era. Now let's talk about national income post-independence. 